Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In 2023, I am undertaking a no buy year. However, I have stuff that I haven't actually filmed a whole video of yet from holidays that I actually went on at the very tail end of 2022. So today we're doing one of those haul videos. I'm actually filming it in one of the hottest days that we've had so far in Scotland. I think it's 24 degrees today. So this is possibly the most inappropriate haul that I have ever filmed in terms of what is in it versus the seasons and what is actually going on outside right now. But I don't know if you could actually hear that there. But basically there is a lot of hammering going on next door. The same happened last Saturday when I was trying to film. So the plan had actually been to film the second update for my no buy year, which I actually already filmed last Saturday, but I filmed for about six hours and I just started and stopped so many times because of the work that was going on. I imported that footage and I just thought I don't have the wherewithal to even start watching that to edit it. So I just decided I would refilm it today. That was the plan. But the work's going on again. So I actually just needed to film a quicker video. Basically that is why you're getting this video today and I was planning to do the second update about my no buy year to put this video and my London haul video in context of that update but things just don't always work out. So today you're getting my Dublin haul um, from when I went to Dublin in December 2022 early bird catches the worm and all of that, uh, June 2023. Here we go, I hope you enjoy it despite its seasonal inappropriateness. The first things that I've got to show you are actually some jewellery pieces which are both from the brand Chupi. Both of the rings that I've got on at the moment are from Chupi as well, I'm a huge fan of their designs. Now the packaging that I have got, because I am like six months down the line from buying this, they've actually had a rebrand and I really am very pleased because I feel like the the packaging it was always lovely and whatever but I think it was maybe more sort of playful and girlish than their pieces maybe were so they've had a bit of a rebrand and I am much 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 more into their brand aesthetic now than I was before but I always loved the pieces obviously. This was the the old packaging and it was it was really really pretty but I don't think it really screamed luxury and um, the likes of this green ring, this was three and a half thousand pounds. The heart ring was 500. So we were talking about luxury price points. We were talking about solid gold jewelry and I don't think this packaging really reflected that. So I'm really, really pleased with the new designs, etc. But the packaging that I have is still the old design packaging, just in case that causes any confusion. First thing that I've got is this necklace. Now you might think this looks familiar because I have a very very similar necklace from Chuvie that I quite often wear paired with this necklace actually. This necklace is from a brand called By Gab's Luck. I actually got this, it's an Irish brand and I got this when I went to Dublin in December 2021 alongside the other necklace that I've got that looks like this. Basically these are coin necklaces. The first one that I got is actually an Irish farthing. It was one of the earliest coins, I think it's from 1930. So it's from right near the start of Ireland having their own first coins having gained independence from Britain. The farthing's obviously from the pre-decimal system. This necklace is actually the design that was the pound coin before Ireland switched to the euro, so it's the decimal system of Irish coins. This basically was getting discontinued. Quite fancied having something from the pre-decimal Irish coin system and then the decimal Irish coin system. I think just because I, I love history and I really like Irish history in particular in the sort of establishment of Ireland as an independent country, that's a real area of interest for me. The sort of history aspect of that really appealed. I've got some footage that I'll maybe insert from the National Museum of History and Decorative Arts, I think the coin collection was in. You can see the old coins which I'll maybe insert alongside the cutaways of the necklaces just to show them to you. The designs in the coins are both annals as you can see. The one on the farthing is a woodcock. The committee which was headed up by Yates that decided on the first Irish coins I think that started in 1926 so this one was minted in 1930. The coin that this necklace was cast from so it's a very early coin but the committee decided to go with animals because so much of Ireland's economy was agricultural which then kind of was travelled through so that on the punt or the pound it's a stag 
I believe a red deer stag possibly might be getting that one wrong. So that's the animals in the front. What I just wanted to add in as well that I think is interesting in terms of being one being an older coin and one being one of the last coins before the move to the euro is that on the newer coin which was struck in 1990 it's just got air and the harp on the, the right hand side there if you guys can see that but on the older coin from 1930 and please any Irish speakers completely feel free to correct me and please forgive me if I say this completely incorrectly. Serstat Erin, I believe is how you pronounce that, which means Irish Free State. So the earlier coins had Irish Free State on them and then later on it moved to Era. So that's the difference in the back as well, which from the, the historical point of view to me is quite interesting. Uh, what I did so that I could wear them together, the first coin necklace that I've got, the farthing coin, that is on a shorter chain, I think it's on a 14 inch or a 16 inch and whatever one that one's on, this is on the longer, so if that's on a 14 inch this is a 16, if that's on a 16 this is on an 18, I can't quite remember the way it works out. This one's just a little bit longer which means they can be worn nicely together. The reason that I am not actually wearing my other coin necklace today, as would have made sense whilst I was talking about this one in the context of wanting it to have the two of them together, is because the chains on these are so fine and the clasps are so, so fidgety. I am a completely able-bodied person and I really, really, really struggle with them. I keep saying I'm going to get other chains at some point to put the, the pendants on, chains that would be easier to get on and off. I actually can't do it myself, so that's why I'm not wearing the other one at the moment is because I need somebody else to clip it on for me because they're so, so tiny. A bit of a design flaw, you know, when you're a single person and the chains are so fine that I feel like as well, I can't even just put it on and leave it on. I feel like if I was sleeping in it or whatever, I would snap it. Like the chain is so, so fine. So the chain isn't great, but I am looking to get other chains to put these two on, but I really do love the start and end of the coins and the history and the way that they they go together so I really wanted to get this one before it was discontinued and my second jewellery purchase which was again from Chupi this is the North Star Small Signet which is one of Chupi's sort of signature pieces that usually comes with a diamond but they actually released this one with an emerald emerald's actually the birthstone of May so I think it was actually a limited edition release over a year ago in May 2022 and basically what I did was I ordered it but I said I would go and pick it up because you have to pay customs now to import from Ireland into the UK, which is absolute madness. Thanks Brexit. Can't even get started on it. Basically cheaper because I knew I was going to Ireland anyway. It was cheaper for me to go and pick that up in person and not pay the customs. Literally the flight was cheaper, which is madness, but it is what it is. And because I do have my hero ring with the green stone, it's nice to have the other green stone and you know, for it all to tie in. In fact, I'll maybe just pop that on, wear it for the rest of the video. That's how the three of them look together. Very, very pleased. Moving on from jewellery, I got a book and as I said, completely seasonally inappropriate, but you know how I love Christmas anyway, at all times of year. So just look in June at this beautiful bag. It's got this Gorgeous Christmas scene on it. It's the same in both sides, in case you're wondering. So this is from Dubray Books and I just thought this was so, so lovely. Within the aesthetically pleasing bag, there is a very aesthetically pleasing book, which is this one here. Now, I'm not going to insult the Irish language by attempting to pronounce this without guidance. I am sure the man in the bookshop actually told me how to pronounce this, but I can't quite remember now. Um, so it's the Empathy Book for Ireland. It's actually like a charity book. Percentage of this. Have I made this up? Yes, no, I, was, I couldn't see it in the back and I was like, have I made this up? No. So 100%, so it's not just a percentage actually, it's 100% of all royalties from this book will go directly to delivering the Activating Social Empathy Education Programme in Irish schools and youth work organisations. So basically that is a programme that is going around and like teaching and promoting empathy as a quality and a value within the education system in Ireland and obviously that contributes a lot 
a lot towards just being empathetic to each other in general which is amazing just for kind of every day particularly valuable in terms of making sure that people who have their young people at school discovering that they are part of the LGBTQIA plus community or that they are disabled or whatever just promoting that idea of empathy and making sure that we're approaching each other with empathy in those situations. There's also, in accordance with the research behind the programme, a much kind of wider scale of what being empathetic actually allows you to achieve and how it allows you to kind of go through life and how how much better things are basically if people have empathy, which actually doesn't seem like the the widest jump to be making, but it's not if you think about it, something that is very well promoted, particularly not um, under our current government here in Britain, but let's not get political. Yeah, this channel is not the place for me to, to be getting political, it's where I talk about other things that I enjoy and try not to bring the rants of that into everyday life, but that aside, uh, so this book basically it's a collection of Essays on Empathy, so really really easy book to dip in and out of. Particularly wanted it, but Louise O'Neill's got an essay in it and Martin McDonough, who I'm a huge fan of, has an essay in it. Alongside lots of other probably phenomenal writers that I just haven't yet uh, come across. And alongside writers there's, you know, people that are involved with the programme and, you know, sort of public, like Michael D. Higgins obviously is not a writer, you know, there's political figures, there's uh, public figures. It's, uh, it's just really interesting how different people sort of, you know, approach and view empathy and people's personal experiences and yeah, just a really, really interesting, thought-provoking book um, which I have enjoyed dipping in and out of to the extent that I have already but I've been trying to keep it good so it looked nice on camera. It is a beautiful shade. I don't think you can really tell on camera because it makes my background darker. Um, as it focuses on me but this is actually a really really similar shade to the paint that's on the wall behind me so one of my favourite colours just a very aesthetically pleasing book um, so it was 25 euros it wasn't cheap but obviously donating to a very very good cause that I would love to see rolled out wider than Ireland just putting it out there I did get some clothing so if you watched my introduction to my no by year actually I was talking about the fact that I've moved to head office in my work I've not changed jobs I've just literally moved from from working in one of the other sites to move, working in the head office where there's more of an office vibe so I got a pair of trousers that I thought would help with that which I've obviously then not worn because I've been waiting to put them in this video but now I can wear them so they're just quite a kind of basic pair of brown trousers and um, they were from River Island but I quite liked, I don't know if you'll really be able to see, um, the waistband's got this kind of crossover detail so it sort of dips down and crosses over which just adds a little bit of interest. Belt loops as well so I can, you know, wear a belt with them and they're not a super super wide leg but they're a, a wide air leg. So I got them for work. In terms of other clothing things that I got, uh, I went to the Dubari shop and I got this quarter zip, this gorgeous green colour. I feel like I really suit this kind of shade of green. I think it works with my eyes and my hair and whatever. So it's just very, very plain. It's got the little Dubari logo on the sleeve, but that's pretty much it. So you've got this pull tab here. So you can fold the collar down or you can have it up. So this was quite expensive. It was 99 euros, but the Dubai things are always very well made so I hope to have it for a very long time basically and it was actually cheaper again to buy it in Ireland than it was to buy it off the Dubai website at home anyway so technically although it, was, it wasn't a cheap purchase I did save myself a few pennies by buying it whilst I was there and the other thing that I purchased from Dubai is actually a headband it's a fluffy headband. It's faux fur, by the way, just to highlight. I know sometimes with the sort of more country brands, you wouldn't be surprised if it's not faux fur, but it is faux fur. It's chinchilla. Um, so yeah, I just thought that was really, really pretty. It is obviously not the season for this right now, but I feel like coming into winter, these are really good because they give you 
that little bit of warmth but they don't completely ruin your hair at the back so you don't need to wash your hair like the day you've worn them um so yeah that is my chinchilla a uh, fluffy headband slash hat substitute from Dubari and we'll do the other probably most seasonally inappropriate item that I've got in this haul and that is from Marks and Spencers when I bought a polar bear jumper so not not explicitly a Christmas jumper like a wintery jumper but kind of a Christmas jumper uh, so this was actually from the men's section I really like the colour of it thought the design was super cute. Right down to the bottom it's got another kind of fair isle line here. Always happy to add to my Christmas jumper slash winter jumper collection and I feel like as well like particularly with my sort of Christmas jumpers a lot of them especially like the ones that I bought years and years ago when I was a student and whatever and um, you know they're maybe not the best quality you know I maybe bought them in like Primark and other sort of high street shops who probably don't produce their novelty seasonal jumpers to the highest quality anyway so I thought you know this seemed like quite a nice one and I feel like being from m and it should be slightly more decent quality I do find um, in general the menswear quality is better than women's wear quality in most shops particularly where knitwear is concerned yeah I thought that gave me a slightly nicer one and maybe this Christmas I'll be able to declutter one or two that are maybe getting past their their best. Sticking with m &S, but actually brand is phase 8 but I bought the dress in Marks and Spencers. I got this wrap dress. It is full length and it's got gold stars on it. Again I'll do cutaways and close-ups that will be far better than me attempting to hold this up and show you. It's got a really pretty sort of ruffle down it. I wore this on Christmas day. It's very very long so I need very high heels with it. Uh, Lauren and I were going to see ABBA. We went to the ABBA voyage thing in London when we went between Christmas and New Year and I had thought it would be a nice outfit for that but I ended up I needed such high heels with this and we were going to ABBA like we weren't just going from the hotel to ABBA. We were going to other places first as you do on holiday and then going to ABBA later that evening. I didn't wear it to ABBA but I do think it would have still been a great outfit for ABBA. Now excited to actually put it into my wardrobe and wear it properly. It's been hanging on the back of the door waiting for me to film this haul video for forever so really pleased now to have actually filmed it and can put it into my wardrobe and start wearing it more often to all the, the occasions that I have to go to where full length dresses are required. Do you know what? Sometimes you've just got to create the occasion for yourself and that's what I'm going to do. I feel like like post-Covid we'd all just stopped going out for so long we didn't know how to anymore but yeah Lindsay and I have been saying we really want to like get dressed up and use the nice clothes in our wardrobes again which we haven't done for so long so we will create an occasion when I can wear this. Speaking of the very high heels in question that I had to wear with it I went for these ones so these are also from Marks and Spencer. Now I don't know if the black is currently out but they have definitely taken this oh, as you can see I didn't take the stickers off the bottom and then have worn them um, but they have definitely taken this style forward and I would really encourage you to have a look at it these shoes are high but they are so comfortable they've got the big platform obviously um, and they've also got an ankle strap so they feel really really secure on your feet they did actually also do them in green which I couldn't find in my size in Dublin and I was really happy to find those when I went to London so spoiler for my London haul these shoes in a different colour are in it and um, they've currently got them out in day I've seen them in shop definitely in white and in a sort of metallic sort of silver shade I think actually online they call the metallic shade like antique gold but I'd say it's quite a cool tone it's maybe sort of putery actually I would say in real life more than I wouldn't have called it gold if it had been up to me but yeah these shoes if you've got any events or whatever probably particularly those sort of metallic putery ones I feel like they'd go with a lot of things these are so so comfortable if you are short like me and would benefit from the the height and the last things that I've got to show you are some prints some artwork so the first one is from the GPO as I mentioned already I'm quite interested in Irish history 
So the GPO, if you're ever visiting Dublin and if you like history, obviously, uh, the GPO was the headquarters basically of the 1916 Rising and they've got an amazing museum. It's still a working post office as well, um, but they do have an amazing museum attached to it and that is my favourite thing that I've ever done. I'm going this summer and I'm actually finally four trips in getting to do the guided tour. I think between like Covid and um, availability and whatever I've not been able to do it before so really looking forward to my summer trip this year. I'm going to do the guided tour of the GPO, also doing a guided tour of Glasnevin and I'm really really looking forward to it. But in the GPO they have a gift shop and they had a Dublin print that I have loved since the first time I saw it and I didn't buy it the first time I saw it and completely regretted it but I've gone back every time to try and buy it and the last couple of times they've only had it to sell in a frame so fingers crossed for me they have it this summer not in the frame if they don't I might just buy it in the frame and it's not even the expense of it it's the heaviness of bringing a frame back in a case and then also it's not a frame I would have chosen but I do absolutely I love the print so I might just need to suck it up and buy it this summer if they don't have it on its own and um, but whilst I was in looking for that print I did get this one so this is from the Dublin prints about the same kind of size of this and I think it's from the same hairy fruit art sorry I think I was holding that upside down for you there um so this is the back I'll, I'll insert cutaways you'll see it better so I think the two of them will actually look really nice hung side by side this one is actually all the places that are associated and played a part in 1916 Rising. That's one of the things as well that I really love about Dublin as a city is it's so compact and you can see like so many sort of places of note in a very sort of small, well not completely tiny, like you couldn't do it completely in a day or anything but you can see a lot in a very small area which is so good for tourists and for visiting. And right in the centre here we have the GPO I'm pointing at this, I'm going to be honest guys, haven't put my contact lenses in, can't see past like here, no idea what I just pointed at, but I hope I hit the right one. Um, and then so you've got like Liberty Hall, Moor Street, North King Street where there was a massive massacre, um, the Four Courts, Jacob's Biscuit Factory, always one of the, the more notable ones down here for the sort of irony of it, St Stephen's Green here where a lot of the women that were involved fought and then you've got a uh, little signs here pointing you off to Collins Barracks which is now the National Museum of Decorative Arts and History which is the one that I'm sure the coins were in actually um, and then Kilmainham Jail which I went to when I visited in December so I will link those vlogs up down below if you want to go and kind of have a look at any of those places on your own not on your own, through my vlog but you know what I mean outside of the, the context of a whole video. So I got this one, which I'm really, really pleased with. And, you know, as I said, I think it's the same artist. So I think they'll complement each other really nicely when I get the actual Dublin one. And then the other print that I've got is from this company here, Jam Art Factory. And this is actually a gift. So this one isn't for me, but I don't think the people that it's for will be watching this video. And yes, Yes, it is a gift that I've had for about a year that I haven't given them yet, but that's what adult friendships are like sometimes. You just don't see each other for a hundred years at a time and you just hoard things and then you meet up and you've got like three years of gifts to give each other. It is what it is. So yeah, they are big horror fans, so uh, obviously Dublin's got a massive link with Bram Stoker. I think he wrote most of Dracula in whilst he was living in Dublin and there's like a Dracula castle experience and whatever. Being not a horror fan, being the sort of person who would be like awake for a week and not sleep if they watched a horror film. Um, it's not really my area of expertise but they're big big horror fans. So I got this little Dracula print and it says, Welcome to my house, enter freely and of your own will. So it says in the back, this quote's from Bram Stoker's gothic tale Dracula. Jonathan Harker arrives on Count Dracula's doorstep in the middle of the night. That is what that one looks like so uh, I thought they could possibly put that by their door. Not that I'm dictating to them where it should go in their house, but I think they will enjoy that. The Dracula one doesn't have a price on it, but I feel like it was about the sort of 20 euro mark there or thereabouts. 
and this one was 29 euros anyway that is everything that i bought in dublin so that's everything that i've got to show you in this whole video thank you very much for watching it i hope you've enjoyed it if you did please make sure to give it a like because that really helps me out it's algorithm chat i know it's really boring but we're all slaves to the algorithm so i would really appreciate it if you would like the video and help a girl out I'm uploading two videos a week in the month of June, so I will see you on Wednesday for my next video. If you're not subscribed already, please do hit the subscribe button so that you get that video in your feed when it goes live. And I will see you in that one. Bye.